Hello everyone, welcome to Skills Build Training YouTube channel. My name is Kamran and this channel is all about to show you how to become an IT pro really really fast. This video is a bash scripting tutorial in which we will cover the multiple concepts of bash scripting. Previously we have made a video on bash scripting and that video is for the beginners. So if you are a beginner then I will put the link of that video in the description of this video. You can visit that link and you can learn the initial concepts of bash. So without any further ado, let's get started. The first topic that we are going to talk about is the echo command. The echo is a very useful command in bash. It is used to print the data or text on the terminal. We pass the text as an argument to the echo command and it print it on the terminal. So for example, if you want to print your name on the terminal, then you can do so with the echo command. So simply you have to write echo on the terminal. After that, you have to put some arguments in the echo command. For example, I'm going to write here my name. So when I will hit enter, you can see that my name is printed on the terminal. So we can use this command in the terminal and in our bash script as well. On the desktop, you can see that I have a file script.sh and on the terminal I have navigated to my desktop directory and now let's open this script.sh file in the nano editor. Nano is a built-in terminal based text editor in Ubuntu and I am using Ubuntu 20.04 for the demonstration of this video. So to open this script.sh file you simply have to write on your terminal nano which is essentially my text editor and then you have to type the name of your file that is script.sh. Alright, so the script.sh file is now open and now let's try to execute the echo command. So simply write here echo and now you have to write the name like Kamran and anything that you want to print on your terminal. So for example, welcome to the skills build training. Alright, so I want to print this on the terminal. So let's save this file and go back to our terminal. And now if you want to execute this file, you simply have to write here script.sh. Alright, so now you can see that it has printed on the terminal. Welcome to skills build training. You can write your data, you can pass the text as an argument to the echo command in the single quotes or in the double quotes as well. So here I have written in the double quotes. Let me just put here the single quotes and run this command again. So let's save this and let's execute our script.sh file again and you can see that it has printed on the terminal welcome to skills build training. So that was all about the echo command. Now let's move on to our next topic that is how to declare a variable in your bash script. So let's open our bash script again. Like the other programming languages, we can also declare the variables in bash scripting. Variables are used to store your data or information inside your script. So whenever you have to declare a variable, you simply have to write the name of your variable here. I'm going to declare a variable name and inside this variable, I'm going to store my name. So this is my variable. And if you want to print the information that is stored inside this variable, you simply have to use the echo command for this. When you are referring your variable, you will refer it with the dollar sign. So if I have to refer my variable here, so I will put the dollar sign. And next I will write the name of my variable which is name. Let's go back and let's try to execute it. And you can see that my name is printed on the terminal. So this is how you can declare the variables inside your bash script. Now let's move on to our next topic that is comments. Like the other programming languages, we can also add the comments in our bash scripting file. In computer programming, the comments are the programmer readable explanation. Comments help the programmer to understand the purpose of code. For example, if you are working as a software developer in an organization and you have written some code which is really complex, so you can add comments into it. So that if the other software developer want to work on that particular scripting file or programming file, so he or she will get to know that why you have written this piece of code, what is the purpose behind writing this piece of code or line of code. In bash scripting, there are two types of comments. The one is inline comment and the other is the multi-line comment. So let's see what is the inline comment. 
the inline command start with the hash symbol for example if you have to declare a variable then you can write here this is variable one all right and the name of the variable is equal to num1 which is equal to 20 and for the second variable you can write here this is variable 2 which is equal to num2 which is equal to 20 so this is how you can write the inline comments in bash script if i write here echo dollar num1 echo dollar num2 you will see that the comments will not be executed like it will not be printed on the terminal because they are really here to help the programmer to understand the purpose of the code okay so let's save our file and try to execute this file and you can see that the commands are not printed on the terminal and now let's discuss about the multi-line commands in bash we can also put the multi-line commands like if you have to write the description of your code then it is the best idea to write it in the multi-line comments instead of the inline comments. You can write the multi-line comments like this. So simply you have to put the colon here and after that you have to put the single code and now you can write your multi-line comment. For example, this is my bash file. Okay, so this is my comment and I can add a new line here. This is my bash file and I am practicing so let's save this file and try to execute it so you can see that there is no error it means that they are the comments and they are not executed and if I write here echo my name so you will see that only my name will be printed on the terminal and there will be no comments in the output all right so that is the idea of comments and now let's move on to our next topic that is getting the user input in bash we can get the input from the user and for this purpose we have to use the read command for example if you have to enter your username and you want to store it into the variable then you have to use the read command for this purpose uh, so let's see an example of this that how we can use the read command to get the user input so let's open the script and uh, let me just remove these commands from here all right echo enter your name so when the user will read this line enter your name he or she will enter the name on the terminal now we have to read that value that is entered by the user and we have to store it into a new variable so for reading the input we have to write here read command and now we have to write the name of the variable so simply the name value will be read and it will be stored in the name variable and now let's print the name value let's save our script and go back let's try to execute it and now you have to enter your name all right so you can see that i entered the name kamran the read command uh, read this name and it stored it into the name variable and after that it is printed on the terminal now let's see another example of getting the user input in which we will get the two numbers from the user and then we will print the sum on the terminal so now i'm gonna write here echo enter the first number And the first number will be read by the read command and it will be stored in the num1 variable and now we have to write here enter the second number and let's store it into the num2 variable and now we have to sum up these variable so for this purpose you have to put the double parenthesis and now to store the sum we also need a variable so i'm going to write here a new variable which is equal to sum and it is equal to dollar num1 plus dollar num2 all right so in order to print the sum we have to use the echo statement echo dollar sum all right so this is our program let's try to execute it enter the first number that is 20 now you have to enter the second number that is 10 and the sum is 30 all right so you can see that in this scenario the first number was stored inside the number one variable and the second number was stored inside the number two variable then we 
summed up these two variable values and the sum is printed on the terminal. So this is how you can get the user input in batch scripting. Now let's move on to our next topic that is save data in a text file. In the batch scripting, you can save the data in a text file through your batch script. In various situations, you need to save the data in batch scripting. For example, if you want to save your logs or you want to save some important data in a text file, then you can easily do so. So let's see how we can do it. Let's open the script.sh file. You can save the data in a text file in two ways. The first way is by using the echo command and the other way is by using the cat command. There are also other ways to do that but these are the two important and basic ways. So we will discuss these two ways here. So the first way that we are going to discuss is through the echo command. So for example, if you want to save any text in your text file you simply have to write echo then you have to write your text in the double quotations so for example I'm gonna write here welcome to skills build training YouTube channel and uh, the next line that I want to store is this is a bash scripting tutorial all right, so I want to save these two lines in a text file. Once you have written this text, then you simply have to put these two angle signs and then you have to write the name of your text file. So for example, I want to save it into the file.txt and I also want to save this in file.txt. If the file.txt does not exist, so when we will execute this bash scripting file, it will automatically create a new file which will be named as file.txt and the data will be stored in my file.txt. As my bash script is present on the desktop, so the file.txt will be created on the desktop. You can see that the currently I don't have any file on the desktop which is named as file.txt. So in this case, it will create a new file.txt, it will store the text in inside this file so let's save this script and let's execute it so here you can see that it has created a new file file.txt and if I open this file.txt you can see that the data is stored successfully inside the file.txt which is welcome to the skills build training YouTube channel that we have written inside our script and this is a bash scripting tutorial so this is how you can do that and now let's see the other way the other way of storing data in your text file is through the cat command the cat command is used to print the content of your file on the terminal but we can also use it to save data in a text file. The difference between saving data through the echo command and the cat command is that like when you write your cat and you put the angle brackets and then you write the name of the file.txt or any text file. So in this case when you will execute your script you will write the data at runtime on the terminal and when you will terminate your program program the data will be stored inside the file so let's see how it works now you can see that the terminal is converted into a text editor so for example I'm gonna write here hey my name I am Kamran so now in order to terminate this you have to press ctrl C and if we open our file.txt again you can see that it has saved in the text file I am Kamran let's execute our skip.sh uh, script again and uh, now let's save multiple lines in file.txt bash is useful it help us to automate our task you should learn bash so these are the multiple lines that I have written here so now let's press ctrl C and let's open the file.txt again and here you can see that the data is stored inside the text file successfully so this is how you can store or save your data in a text file and now let's move on to our next topic that is bash conditional statement the conditional statement is used in any programming language to do any decision making task this statement is also used in bash to perform automated tasks like another programming language 
but the syntax is little bit different in batch so for example if you want to compare two numbers then you can choose the conditional statement so in the conditional statement we put a condition if a specific condition is a true then a particular line of code is executed and if the condition is false then the other line of code that we have defined is executed in bash we have multiple types of conditional statements like if statement if else statement if else if statement and the case statement and we will discuss these statements in detail so we will start with the if conditional statement and many conditional operators can be used in if statement to do any conditional task some of the conditional operators that are mostly used in if statement are these so for example if you have to compare two numbers then you have to use this operator okay so hyphen eq and the description of this operator is that it returns true if the two numbers are equivalent and similarly the hyphen lt is used to compare two numbers and it returns true if a number is less than another number and similarly hyphen gt if the number is greater than an other number it will return true so these are about the numbers and if you have to put the conditional statement on your strings then you can use these operators so double equal it returns true if two strings are equivalent and uh, the factorial sign and then the equal sign it will return true if the two strings are not equivalent and the factorial sign which is uh, used for not in the bash and it will return true if the expression is false so let's see how we can use it in our bash script so let's open up our script and first of all we are going to check the working of the if statement so here I'm gonna define a number whose value is equal to 9 and in order to write the if statement you have to simply write here if then you have to give the space put the brackets here and now you have to give space and then you have to write your condition inside these pair of brackets alright so I have to check whether this number is greater than 10 or equal to 10 then I will write here if dollar number is greater than 10 so what it will do then it has to print on the terminal the number is greater than 10 okay so the if statement is followed by a then statement if this particular condition is true then what it has to do it has to print on the terminal the number is greater than 10 and if this condition is false then for this we have to write here the else block the else statement and for writing the else statement you simply have to write here else and then you have to print your message here echo the number is less than 10 all right so these are the two conditions that i am evaluating here if the number is greater than 10 then this piece of code will be executed and if the number is not greater than 10 then it will be executed and to end the if block you have to write here fi and this is the end of the if block and now let's save our script and let's try to execute it and you can see that the number value was 9 which is less than 10 in this case the else block is executed and it has printed the number is less than 10 and if I make the value of this number 20 and you will see that in this situation the condition is true and it will print the number is greater than 10 and the number is greater than 10 is printed on my terminal so you can implement the if else condition if you have to check for a single condition but what if you have multiple conditions to check so for this purpose we have the else if block and uh, here we have to put the else if block and the syntax is like that l if the number is equal to 20 so in this case it will print on the terminal the number is 20 so the idea is that when this script will be executed 
first it will check this condition if this condition is false it will come to this condition and it will check if the number is equal to 20 then it will write on the terminal the number is 20 if both these conditions are false then it will execute the else block so when you have to implement multiple conditions in your bash script then you can use the elif statement for this purpose but in this condition well it will come to the first if statement it will see that the number is greater than 10 so it will automatically print on your terminal that the number is greater than 10 because our first condition is true so i'm gonna change it to less than so in this case you will see that if the number is less than 10 it is false and essentially it will go to the next condition and it will see that the number is equivalent to 20 and it will print on the terminal the number is 20 so let's save our file and try to execute it and you can see that the number is 20 let's see another example of if else if statement and in this example we will take the input from the user and we will implement this condition on a string so let's open our file again all right so now i'm gonna write here echo enter your name and this name will be stored into the name variable so the condition is if the name variable value which is entered by the user is equal to mark then it has to print on the terminal the name is mark okay and then now let's implement an other condition l if the dollar name variable value is equal to john then it has to print on the terminal so make sure to give the space here if you don't give the space so it will be a syntax error in bash then echo the name is john and if both these conditions are false then it will print on the terminal for example incorrect name all right and lastly we have to close our if block with the fi i forget to put the space here so let's uh, put space here and uh, save this file and now let's execute it i'm gonna write here mark and uh, the first condition is true and the name is mark and let's execute it again and enter here john and now the second condition is true and uh, if i enter any other name then it will say that the name is incorrect because i have written this in the else statement and in this case both the condition are false therefore the else block is executed we can also evaluate the multiple conditions in a single if statement and for that we can use the AND operator and the OR operator for this purpose. So let's see an example of it. Like when we have the multiple conditions then how we can evaluate it in a single if statement. So let me just remove this the previous line of code. So now what I'm gonna do I'm gonna write here echo enter your first name. All right. And let's store it into a variable that is f name variable and now let's write here echo enter your last name and let's store it into another variable that is l name all right so the idea is that now we have to check if the first name entered by the user is equal to mark and the last name entered by user is equal to taylor then we have to say that this condition is true otherwise this condition is false so now we have to check two conditions in a single statement and both these conditions must be true otherwise the condition will be false so let's write here if and now you have to write here a double pair of brackets like this this is the syntax of the bash scripting so now my condition is if the first name is equal to is equal to mark and so for the and condition you have to put the double and operator here and the last name is equal to is equal to Taylor then what it has to do it has to print on the terminal the name is correct else it has to print on the terminal 
the name is incorrect so let me just explain this uh, script to you first of all we have got a first name we have stored it into the f name variable then we have got the last name we have stored it into the l name variable and if the first name is equal to is equal to mark and the last name is equal to is equal to taylor then the name will be correct in this situation it has to evaluate that both the conditions should be true the first name should be mark and the last name should be taylor otherwise it will print that the name is incorrect and now let's finally close our if block here all right let's save our script script dot sh so let's write here mark and now write here john so the name is incorrect because both the conditions are not true in this case so let's execute it again and write here mark taylor and now both the conditions are true and the name is correct so this is how you can uh, evaluate multiple conditions inside a single if statement although we have put the double bracket pair here but instead of this you can write it like this as well so this is the first condition so this is the first pair of brackets and then you can put here the other pair of bracket for the second condition and make sure that there should be a space between the and operators and your uh, bracket so the first name is mark the last name is taylor and the name is correct both the syntax are correct if you are evaluating multiple conditions inside a single if statement now let's see an example of the or operator the idea is that if any of the condition is true then it will say that the name is correct so for the or operator we have to remove this and we have to put the double pipe sign here all right so now the idea is that if the first name is equal to mark or the last name is equal to taylor it will print on the terminal the name is correct and uh, if the first name is not equal to mark and the last name is not equal to taylor then uh, not one of our condition is true and it will print the name is incorrect so enter the first name mark so this condition i'm gonna let it to be true and the other thing is i'm gonna put some random string here so now it says that because one of the condition is true so it has printed the name is correct and if both the conditions are false and then it will say that the name is incorrect so if you have implemented the or operator then one of the condition must be true so that was all about the if statement now let's move on the case statement the bash case statement is similar to if else statement but they are easier and simpler it helps us to match one variable against several values. The syntax of the case statement is very simple in bash. So now let's see an example of it. This is my bash scripting file and let me just remove this existing script. In this example, we are going to check the marks of a student against multiple values. So let's write here echo enter your marks and let's store it into the marks variable and now we have to check what is the grade of the student if the student enters some marks the case statement is very good option to check one variable against multiple values so the grade of the student so we have to write here the grade of the student is and now we have to check it so now I'm going to apply the case statement on the marks variable all right so case marks in this is the syntax and if the marks are 90 then it has to print on the terminal the grade is a and then you have to put the double semicolon here so this is our one case then if the student has got the 90 marks then the grade is a and if the marks are 80 then we have to print on the terminal the grade is B this is the other case all right and if the marks are 70 60 and 50 we have to assign the grade according to the marks so for example if the marks are 70 
then the grade is going to be C and uh, if the marks are 60 then the grade is going to be D and uh, if the marks are 50 excuse me for this we have to put the double semicolon here and if the marks are 50 then the grade is F in the case statement we also have a default case like if the above given cases are not true then it will execute the default case and if the marks are below than 50 then what it will do it will print on the terminal information of grade is not available all right so static is the default case here if the student enter any other marks other than 90 80 70 60 or 50 then we will say that the information of grade is not available and to end the case statement you have to write here ez all right so now let's save our uh, bash file and let's go back to our terminal and try to execute it so now you have to enter the marks so for example i'm going to enter here 90 and the grade of the student is 1 in this case the first case is executed and if I enter here 80 the grade of the student is B and similarly for 70 it would be C and for 60 it would be D and for 50 it would be F and if I enter something other than these marks so the information of grade is not available in this case the default case is executed so this is how you can use the case statement to evaluate your conditions i hope you got my point now let's move on to our next topic which is check if a file exists in bash in the bash scripting we have got multiple built-in flags and we can choose the flags information to check if the files or directories exist in our system or not so similarly in this topic we will check if a file exists in bash or not for checking the existence of the file we have to use the hyphen f flag the information of the files is stored in hyphen f flag so now let's see how we can do it so let's open the script file and first of all we have to take the input from the user that what is the file name that you want to check if it is existing or not so let's write here echo enter the file name and let's store it into a variable which is file name variable so whatever file name the user will enter will be stored into the file name variable and now we have to implement here an if condition so if hyphen f flag contains the name of the file then it has to print on the terminal the file exists otherwise it has to print on the terminal the file does not exist so the idea is that inside this if statement we are basically checking that if the file information is uh, stored inside the hyphen f flag or not so if it is stored then this echo statement will be executed otherwise we will get the file does not exist so this is pretty simple i guess and uh, lastly we have to close the if statement and uh, now let's try to execute our script.sh file and now you have to write the file name as my current working directory is desktop and I have a file here which is file.txt so let's write here file.txt and it says that the file exists and if we write something like script file.txt it does not exist on my desktop so it will say that the file does not exist if the file is stored into another directory rather than your current working directory then you have to specify the full path of your file so let's go to my home directory and here I have a text file myfile.txt so simply go to the properties and you have to copy the path of this file all right so let's execute our script again and now in order to check the existence of the myfile.txt we have to write the complete path like slash home slash linux slash myfile.txt in my case 
so if I hit enter it says that the file exists and if I simply write here my file.txt because it is not in my current working directory so it will say that the file does not exist so this is the idea of checking if the file exists in bash or not and now let's move on to our next topic which is to check if a directory exists in bash or not the directory information is stored inside the hyphen d flag so we have to use that flag for this so let's open this script and now we have to alter this script a little bit enter the directory name and uh, it would be dir name rather than hyphen f now we have to write here hyphen d and we have to write here dir name so if the directory name information matches with the hyphen d flag then it has to print on the terminal the directory exists otherwise it has to print on the terminal the directory does not exist all right let's execute this and now I'm gonna write here ABC and it does not exist on my desktop so therefore it has printed that directory does not exist and similarly let's create a directory ABC with the mkdir command and now it exists and if I execute it again so now it says that the directory exists and similarly if your directory is placed in any other folder then you have to write the complete path of that directory so for the documents directory we have to write slash home slash linux slash documents slash home slash linux slash documents all right so it says that the directory exists so if I only write here documents it will show that the directory does not exist because it is not in my desktop. I hope you got my point that how to check if a directory exists in bash or not. And now let's move on to our next topic that is functions in bash. As you know that we can make functions in any programming language like Java, Python, C and C++. The functions contains a particular line of code which perform a specific task so whenever you have to perform a specific task so rather than writing these lines of code again and again we can simply call the function and we can perform our task the functions basically enhances the reusability and make it more convenient for you to perform your task so a bash function is a set of commands that can be called various times. The purpose of a function is to help you make your bash script more readable and to avoid writing the same commands or code over and over again. Now let's talk about uh, defining the bash functions. The syntax of declaring a bash function is straightforward and uh, we can declare the functions with two different formats so let's uh, talk about these formats now and let's open our script.sh file this is our script.sh file and the first format to declare the function is like you have to write the name of the function then you have to put the parentheses and a pair of curly brackets and now you have to write your commands inside this function so for example echo this is a function all right so whenever you have to call this function you simply have to write the name of this function hello so this function will be called here and to call it again you have to write its name again hello so we have called this function four times so let's execute our script and you can see that we have uh, done the similar task four times with the help of a function so basically we have written this is a function in the echo command one time then we have called the function four times and our function is working fine and the second format to declare a function is like you have to write here function keyword and then you have to write the name of the function and if you are writing the function keyword then there is no need to put the parentheses so I have removed the parentheses now and let's try to execute it and you will see that it is working fine so this is how you can declare the functions in bash I hope you got my point and now let's move on to our next topic that is to parse the JSON file in bash the JSON is an open standard file format 
and uh, it is used to exchange the data between your servers and the data is also present in the human readable way. To pass the JSON file in bash, we use the JQ command. It displays the data by removing the particular key. The JQ command is used to print all the key value pairs in your JSON file because the data inside the JSON file is presented in the form of key value pairs. So let's open our script.sh file and let's see how we can do it. For parsing the JSON file, I have downloaded a sample JSON file from the internet so that I can demonstrate it to you. So first of all, we have to check if the file exists or not. If it exists, then we have to parse it. Otherwise, we have to leave it because it does not exist. So the idea is that first we have to take the file name from the user. So enter file name, let's store it inside the file variable and if the file name matches inside the hyphen f flag then we have to write here. To parse the JSON file we have to use the cat command as well. So cat dollar file it will print the content of the file and then we have to put the pipe sign here and write the jq command like this. The idea is that the jq command will present the data in the form of key value pairs and if the file does not exist then we have to write here the file does not exist. Alright and this is the end of our if condition. The jq command does not come pre-installed in the Linux based operating system so as I am using Ubuntu for the demonstration of this tutorial. In order to install jq command on your Debian based operating system you have to write on the terminal sudo apt install jq. As it is already installed on my system but if you are installing it for the first time then it will take a couple of minutes. Now let's run our script and we have to enter the file name. I have a sample JSON file in the downloads directory. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna paste the whole path of this file here. So you can see that it has passed my JSON file. The key is the first name, the name is Joe. The last name is the key and the name is Jackson. And similarly, the gender is the key and the value is male. And if you want to print a specific field in JSON with JQ, so we can easily do that. So for example, there was a phone number section. So in order to print your phone number, we have to change the script a little bit. So if the file exists, then we have to write here JQ and we have to get the phone numbers only from the file. So you have to write here JQ, then you have to write your specific field and then you have to write the name of the file. So if the file exists, it will get the particular field and it will print it on the terminal. So let's see it. Enter the file name. And now you can see that it only prints the data from the phone number field. So this is how you can pass the JSON file with JQ in bash. And now let's move on to our next topic. That is the pseudo file system operations in bash. The pseudo file system is a file system that does not have any actual files rather it has virtual entries that the file system itself makes up on the spot. When you turn on your operating system then the pseudo file system is made at that time at the booting time and when you shut down your operating system the pseudo file system is vanished. So it is not the actual file system. The pseudo file system contains the information of your memory, your network stats and the many other useful things. So in bash we can access the pseudo file system and uh, we can check the different things about our system. So for example let's see how we can print the CPU information with the pseudo file system. The idea is very simple. Let's open our script. So whenever you have to access your pseudo file system you simply have to use slash proc for that. So now we have to print the CPU information that is presented inside the pseudo file system. In order to print the content of the CPU, we have to write in our script cat, then we have to write here slash proc, and then you have to write here CPU info because we want to get the CPU related information. Okay, so this is our command that we have written inside the bash script. Now let's save it and let's try to execute it.
all right so when i have executed my bash script the command is executed and now we have all the cpu related information of the sudo file system on our terminal like the processor is zero this is the vendor id the cpu family is six the model is 58 the model name is intel core i7 3667us and cpu is 2.00 gigahertz and you have got all the cpu information on your terminal by the sudo file system so this is really a magic by the bash and similarly if you want to get the memory information with the sudo file system so you have to write inside your script cat slash proc slash mem info all right and now you have got memory related information the total memory size is this the free memory is this and the available memory is this it lead information of the memory and to print the mounts information with the sudo file system you have to write inside your script cat slash proc slash mounts and when you will execute your script it will write the mounts information because the devices are mounted on the linux system so this is the complete mount system and similarly to see the network stats you have to write inside your script cat slash proc slash net slash net stat and now it will print the network stats with the sudo file system all right so these are the network stats of my system and similarly through the bash scripting we can get the disk usage of our system and we can do it in our script as well so let me just clear the terminal and now let's see how we can print the disk usage with the du command to get the disk information you have to write du and then you have to write the name of the particular disk that you want to get the information about so for example slash home slash linux slash documents so i will get the information of the documents directory all right so this is the complete uh, information of the disk usage of the documents directory to get it into the human readable way we can choose the du hyphen h flag as well and now you can see that it has printed 24k now it is really easy to understand that this is the 24 kilobytes and similarly let's get the information of our desktop so in this case it would be slash home slash linux slash desktop All right, so this is the desktop information like there is a directory that is abc it is of 4 kilobytes and the total 20 kilobytes other than the abc directory are stored on my desktop now let's move on to our next topic which is loops in bash it is a very important and crucial topic to learn because the loops are one of the fundamental concepts of any programming language we can say that the loops are the building blocks of any programming language so like the other programming languages like java python c c plus plus and c sharp we can also use the loops in bash the loops actually help us to automate our task and they are very useful when you have to run a series of commands a number of times until a particular condition is met whenever you have to execute the commands again and again and you have to perform a task iteratively then the loops are very handy in the bash scripting the loops are useful automating repetitive tasks there are three type of loops in bash they are for loop while loop and until loop we will discuss these loops in this topic and we will also discuss the break and continue statement so let's start with the while loop the while loop is used to perform a task until the given condition is true and using the while loop in bash is very simple so first of all let's see the syntax of the while loop in bash let's open up our script file here let me just navigate to my desktop directory and here we have a script.sh file let's open it and let's see the syntax of the while loop the syntax is like that whenever you have to start a while loop you have to write the while keyword it indicates the starting of your loop and then you have to put these brackets 
and inside these brackets you have to specify your condition and this while loop will run until this condition is true and after that the while keyword is followed by a do keyword and it actually starts the body of your while loop and inside the do block you have to write your statements that you want to execute so for example if you want to write here echo your name or the channel name so you can execute this echo statement as many times as you want so after that the while loop is terminated by the done keyword the done keyword indicates the ending of the while loop the condition is evaluated before executing the command if the condition evaluates to true commands are executed otherwise the condition evaluates to false the loop is terminated and the program control will be passed to the command that follows the ending of the while loop so let's see an example of the while loop so first of all what i'm gonna do i'm gonna declare a number variable here whose value is equal to one and now i have to put a condition here while it is the starting of the loop and uh, this loop should run until the number value is less than 10 all right so this is my condition and if i see here the number value is equal to 1 and the condition is number value should be less than 10 so the condition is true in this case and now you have to write here do and inside the do you have to execute your statements so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna print the value of this number so echo dollar num and now i want to increment this number variable one time whenever this loop runs so for this purpose you have to write here the number variable which is equal to dollar double parenthesis add num plus one all right and this is the end of my while loop let me just explain this script to you first of all we have defined a variable number variable whose value is equal to one then we have declared a while loop and inside the while loop the condition is the number should be less than 10 and this is the starting of while loop after the do statement and inside this we have to execute our commands so the first command is the echo command so when this loop will run it will print the value of the number and after that it will increment one into this number so on first iteration the number value will be one it will check that the condition is true so it will run these commands and it will print the value and after that it will increment the number with one so this time the number value would be two so it will go back it will see that the 2 is less than 10 the condition is true the loop will run it will come here it will print 2 here and after the increment the number would be 3 and similarly when the number is equal to 10 it will see that the while loop condition is not true it is false so it will basically terminate and it will come out of the loop and let's put a echo statement here that we are outside of the loop so when the number value will be 10 it will come out of the loop and it will print we are outside of the loop and the number value is 10 all right so this is the concept of the while loop now let's save our script and go back to our terminal and try to execute it now you can see that first of all it has printed one two three four five six seven eight nine so when it reaches to ten the condition was false the loop was terminated and it has written that we are outside of the loop and the number value is equal to ten all right so that is the concept of while loop and for example initially if i make the number value 20 so in the initial stage the condition is false so the loop will not run this time All right, so you can see that the loop does not run. It does not print the number value. It just simply says we are outside of the loop and the number value is 10. So the idea is that whenever we will come out of the loop, this statement will be executed. And now let's see what is the infinite while loop. An infinite loop is a loop that repeats indefinitely and never terminates. If the condition always evaluates to true, you get an infinite loop.
So for example, if we do not increment this variable here and I just try to print this variable number value is equal to 1 and it will always be less than 10 and we do not increment the value so you can see that it would turn into an infinite loop so it is now printing 1 1 1 1 because the loop is executing continuously there is no end to this loop because the condition is always true so in order to terminate this loop you have to press ctrl c on the terminal and we are out of our script we can also use the colon sign to define the infinite while loop so for example i can write here while and this colon sign and let me just remove this condition and in this case the while loop is going to be the infinite loop and i write here welcome to skills build training youtube channel so now it is also an infinite loop it will never terminate all right so it is now printing continuously welcome to skills build training youtube channel because there is no condition and there is no end to this loop so press ctrl c and we are come out of our script all right so one of the most common use of the while loop is to read a file line by line and by defining the while loop we can read a text file we can read a json file we can read a script file and we can read any file so for example if you want to read a file with the while loop first of all you have to define your file path here so on the desktop i have a file.txt i have declared a file variable in which i have stored the name of the file that is file.txt and now it is the start of the while loop i have to read this file so for this I have to use the read keyword and I have to use the hyphen R flag with this so while read hyphen R and I'm declaring a new variable here that is line and now we have to read the file so this is the do statement and inside this we have to print the line so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna write here the line variable so it will read the line and will print it here unless until we have reached the end of the file to declare the end of the file you have to write done after that you have to put this angle bracket and then you have to refer to the file variable so now it will read this file so if I execute my script so you can see that it has read the data from the file inside the file we have welcome to the skill build training youtube channel i am kamran bash is useful and it help us to automate our task you should learn bash so this is what exactly it has printed on the terminal all right so that was the idea of the bash while loop now let's move on to our next loop that is bash until loops the until loop is used to execute a given set of command as long as the given condition is evaluated to be false the basic difference between the while loop and until loop is that the while loop works when the condition is true and the until loop works when the condition is false so let's see the syntax of it let's open up our file to start the until loop you have to write here until keyword then you have to write the scare bracket and inside this you have to put your condition all right so this is also followed by do and the end of the loop is indicated by the done statement but the basic difference that i have already explained that until loop works until the condition is set to be false so for example i'm gonna declare a number here which is equal to one and my condition would be that this loop should run until the number value is greater than 10 and now what you have to do we have to print the value of this number variable here and we have to increment this number variable as we did in the while loop num plus one all right so initially the condition is false like the number one is greater than 10 this is the false condition so this loop will run when the number value will be incremented again and again and it would be 10 or it would be 11 when the value will be 11 it will come here 11 is greater than 10 the condition is true and the loop will terminate 
So let's see the working of it. All right. So it has printed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And when the value was 11, 11 is greater than uh, 10, and the condition is true, and therefore it has terminated the loop. So, for example, I'm gonna add an echo statement here echo, we are out of the loop, and the num is 11, so that you can have the better understanding of the loop. So when the value is equal to 11, the loop is terminated and the line that is next to the loop is executed that we are out of the loop and the number is 11. All right, so now let's move on to our next type of loop that is for loop. The for loop is basically used to iterate over an object or over a list or over a variable. So first of all, let's uh, discuss the syntax of the for loop. And now whenever you have to start the for loop, you simply have to write the for keyword and after that you have to write any variable name for example for i in one two three four five so the idea is that this for loop will run for five times and the for loop is followed by the do statement then you can execute your command inside the do statement so for example i'm going to print here my i variable and it is done so the working of this script is like that this loop will run for five times initially the i's value will be one so it will print one on the terminal then the i value will be two three four and five so similarly it will print two three four five on the terminal so let's see how it works so it has printed on the terminal one two three four five we can also declare the for loop in this way for i and uh, then you have to put the curly braces here like this so inside this curly bracket first of all you have to write the starting point of your loop so let's say i write here one and then you have to put the double dots and the ending point of this loop is 30 so this loop will run from 1 to 30 and it will print 1 to 30 on the terminal Alright, so here you can see that the loop is run for the 30 time and it has print 1 to 30 on the terminal. And if you want to increment your value by a specific number, in this case the value is incremented by 1, but if you want to increment it by a specific number, for example for 5, so then you can write here double dot 5. So basically when you are writing it, you can basically defining here start of the loop then you are defining here the end of the loop and then you are defining here the incremented value so here the start is 1 and is 30 and the incremented value is equal to 5 so let's run this loop so 1 6 11 16 21 26 this is what it has printed and now let's see how we can use the for loop with string variables or string values. So for example, I have a different type of elements for i in Ubuntu, Linux Mint. Linux Mint is the one operating system. Manjaro, Fedora and Arc Linux. These are the multiple Linux based operating system. So I have to print these uh, elements or these items on the terminal. So the idea is that I have to write here for then I have to write the echo statement dollar I and this is done. Now what it will do first of all it will print Ubuntu it will print then it will print Linux Mint Manjaro Fedora and Arc Linux. Excuse me for this we have to write in here because it has to iterate through this uh, uh, the names of the Linux distributions. Now let's run our script and you can see that it has printed a Ubuntu, Linux Mint, Manjaro, Fedora and Arc Linux. Alright so we have discussed the while loop, until loop and for loop in detail. Now let's move on to the break and continue statement. And first of all let's see that what is the break and continue statement. The break and the continue statements allow us to control the loop execution. So by using the break and continue statement, we can control the execution of the loop, we can terminate the loop, or we can skip any particular iteration. So first, let's see the break statement. 
The idea is that the break statement terminates the current loop and passes the control to the command that is next to the loop. It is used to exit from a for loop, from a while loop and until loop. The syntax of the break statement is pretty simple. Like whenever you have to use the break statement, you simply have to write break inside your script. So I'm going to implement a new while loop here so that I can demonstrate the working of the break statement inside the while loop. And if I write here num1 which is equal to 1 while number is less than 10 do and inside this we have our statement echo dollar num it will print the number variable and then the number is incremented by one dollar double parenthesis this is the syntax of incrementing a number in bash all right so now what i want to do i want to write here that if the number value is equal to excuse me for this write 10 here and now what i want to do i want to write here if the number value is equal to is equal to 3 then the loop should break and we should come out of the loop the loop should be terminated so for this I'm gonna write here an if statement and if the dollar number is equal to 3 then we have to execute the break statement here and this is the end of the if statement this is the end of the while loop and I'm printing here the break statement is executed. So now the loop can be terminated in two ways. Until this condition is true, the loop will run. So if we have a reach here and the number value is equal to 3, so it, the loop will be break. And uh, please put the then statement here as well. All right, so let's save our script. Let's run it. So initially when the number value was one, the loop was executed. When the number value was two, the loop was also executed. So when it reaches to three and the number value becomes three, the break statement is executed and we have come out of our loop. And similarly, we can use it in our until loop as well. So until the number is greater than 10 and it will also terminate it when the number value will be equal to 3 script dot sh and you can see that when it reaches to 3 the break statement is executed so if I conclude the break statement its purpose is to terminate the loop and now let's discuss the bash continue statement the continue statement basically skip the current iteration and it execute the next iteration all right so let's see how the continue statement works i'm gonna write a while loop here while the number is less than 10 this loop should work and now i am incrementing my value here so for example i'm gonna write here num is equal to dollar sign double parenthesis dollar num plus one all right so first of all it will increment the value by one and then it will check the if statement if the number is equal to three then it has to run the continue statement here and this is the end of the if and then we have to print our number here echo dollar number and then we have the done statement so the idea is that when it will reach to number three when the number value will be equal to three it will skip this iteration and then it will continue from the four so here you can see that the value is equal to two because we are incrementing the value in start the value becomes two and when it was three it has not printed it because due to the continue statement the current iteration is skipped and it has started from 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 and we are out of the loop I hope you got my point that how the break statement and continue statement works in loop now let's move on to our next topic which is the string operations in this topic we will perform the string related operations and by performing different operations 
we can basically compare the string we can see that if the string is greater than the other string or smaller than the other string we can concatenate the string we can convert the string into an uppercase we can convert a string into a lowercase or we can get the length of a string and uh, we can get a specific part of a string so these are multiple operations that we can perform on string and we are going to learn about this in this topic so let's start it let's open our script.sh file and the first operation that we are going to learn is that how to check the length of a string so here i'm gonna ask the user to enter a string value and i would store this value into an str variable in order to get the length of a string you have to follow this syntax like you have to put the dollar sign and after that you have to write here the pair of curly brackets and in order to get the length you have to use the hash symbol so dollar curly bracket hash symbol and then the name of your variable so in this case we can get the length of a string so let's try it inside an echo statement echo the length of the given string is dollar pair of curly braces hash symbol and now you have to write the name of the variable that is str all right so this is how we can get length let's save our file and uh, let's try to execute it so for example first of all i'm going to write here abc and the length of the given string is 3 and if i write here skills build training so it is 21 and now if I put a white space so you can see that it also count a white space as a string character so for example a space b space c now the length of the string is 5 so this is how you can basically get the length of a string and now let's see how we can extract a substring from a string variable so for extracting a substring you have to define the position of the string for example you have to specify that from which position the substring should start so it is very simple so if a user enter a string value and i want to get a substring from the position 4 so i will write here echo dollar variable the pair of curly braces then the name of the variable and then i have to put the colon sign here and now i have to write here four all right so now i will get the substring i have to write here the name of our variable which is essentially str so let me just clear my terminal and let's try to execute it so if i write here hello you can see that the fourth position of the string is O because the indexing start from zero. So on zero position we have H, on position number one we have E, on two we have L, on three we have L. So if I enter a big string here like welcome to the skills build training. All right, so our substring is this we can also specify that how much characters we want to get so for example i'm writing here that we will start from the position number four to position number ten so we will basically get the ten characters now so if i execute my script hello and welcome skills build training all right so starting from four we have got ten characters 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Alright, so these are the characters that we have got here. I hope you got my point that how you can get the substring. And now let's move on to our next operation that is to compare two strings if they are equal or not. So in this case we have to take uh, input of two strings from the user so i'm gonna make this variable str1 and i'm gonna write here enter the second string enter the first string and let's uh, save our second string into str2 variable so now we have to apply an if condition here if dollar str1 
is equal to is equal to dollar str2 then it has to print here the strings are equal else it has to print the strings are not equal all right so the idea is that we are getting string one from the user we are getting string two from the user then we are comparing these strings for equality if the strings are equal then it will say that they are equal if they are not then it will print the strings are not equal and now let's end our if block here and now let's run our script and enter here hello and the second string is also hello so you can see that it says the strings are equal and if I write here in the first string ABC and the second string is hello then you can see that the strings are not equal so it is basically comparing the value of these strings if I write here XYZ and in the second string I write here ABC the length of both of the strings is same but the value is not equal is not same so in this case the strings are not equal so it does not basically compare the length of the string it compares the actual value of the string and if you want to compare the strings for non-equality then you can put this sign here and now our statement would be like this the strings are not equal and the strings are equal so if the str1 is not equal to str2 this is our condition so let's try to execute it uh, a b c x y z the condition is true it says that the strings are not equal a b c a b c and the strings are equal in this case the condition is false so that was the comparison and now let's see how to check if a string is greater than the other string or smaller than the other string so let's write here nanoscript.sh and uh, I'm gonna change my condition here so inside the if now we have to write and for the less than you have to write here this slash and the less than sign for the less than comparison for example you can say that the string 1 is less than the string 2 let's change our echo statement as well the st string 1 is smaller than string 2 and here I can say that the string 1 is greater than or equal to string 2 so let's execute our script and enter here hello and now let's enter here hello and welcome so the string 1 is hello and string 2 is hello and welcome so our condition is true and the string 1 is smaller than string 2 and now let's see how we can check if the string is greater than so for the greater than you have to put this sign slash and then the greater sign so in this case the string 1 is greater than string 2 and the string 2 is smaller than or equal to string 1 all right so let's execute our script and uh, let's enter the value of string 1 that is hello and uh, welcome and the second string is hello all right so now let's move on to our next uh, string operation that is concatenation of the string the concatenation refers to the combination of uh, more than one string the meaning of the concatenation is that we are combining some strings together so let's see how we can do it in the bash so let's open our script and in order to concatenate we need two strings so we are gonna take input of the strings from the user and in order to concatenate I'm gonna write here a new variable can't alright so in this variable I'm gonna concatenate my strings so my first string is str1 and the second string is dollar str2 so in order to concatenate the strings you simply have to write here the string 1 and string 2 in this way so now let's print our cant variable and you will see that the strings will be concatenated so enter the first string and the second string is welcome 
and uh, our concatenated string is hello and welcome and similarly we can concatenate more than two strings so let's write here echo enter the second string uh, excuse me for this the third string and it is going to be stored into str3 variable and it is str3 so now the three strings will be concatenated let's execute our script enter the first string enter the second string enter the third string skills build training and you can see that the three strings are concatenated successfully now let's move on to our next operation that is to convert the string into an uppercase and into a lowercase so first of all let's see how we can convert a string into an uppercase so for example let's open our script here and if you want to convert your str1 and str2 data into the uppercase then you have to write here echo then you have to write here the dollar sign and then you have to write here the set of parentheses str1 and the double cat sign it will convert the string 1 into the uppercase and to convert the string 2 into the uppercase you have to write here str2 and the cat sign execute our script enter the first value enter the second value and you can see that the data is converted into the uppercase and similarly in order to convert it into the lowercase you have to use the single cat sign all right and let's uh, execute our script so the first string value is hello the second is welcome you can see that the data remains in the lower cases but the initial letters of both the strings are in the upper cases so this is how you can do the string operations or how you can perform the string operations i hope you got my point now let's move on to our next topic that is getting the arguments from the command line in the bash script we can read the input from command line argument like we can do in the other programming languages as well so for example dollar one is used to store the first argument value the dollar two variable is used to store the second argument value and similarly the dollar three is used to store the third argument value so let's see how we can implement it in our bash script so let's open our script for the first argument you have to write here dollar one for the second you have to write here dollar two and for the third you have to write here dollar three and so on so the values will be stored in these variables and you have to put the echo statement initially so let's save our script and now let's run our script and put your arguments here so for example the first argument is comrade the second is hello the third is welcome and you can see that the arguments are now printed on the terminal so this is how you can get the arguments from the command line so let's alter this a little bit and uh, for example if you want to check that how much arguments are passed then you can write here echo the total arguments are dollar hash so it will count the total number of arguments that are passed to our script and similarly for the first argument you can write here the first is dollar one the second is dollar two and the third is dollar three all right so let's execute our script the first is camera the second is abc and the third is xyz so total number of arguments are three the first is camera the second is abc and the third is xyz so that's it for this video i hope you really liked this video and you really liked something new about the bash scripting if you have not subscribed our channel so please do so by clicking on the subscribe button and hit the bell icon as well if you really like this video then give it a thumbs up and if you want to share some feedback then please write it in the comment section thank you so much for watching this video see you in the next video